Welcome to Recipes for Your Best Life. I'm super excited today to talk to Karina Bellizzi. I have to say it with the Italian accent. Um, and today we're going to talk about the importance of omega-3s in your everyday routine. And there is a reason why they're called essential fatty acids. We need them. And our body does not produce the the essential fatty acids that we need every single day. So we need to get them from outside sources. So welcome, Karina. I'm so glad to have you on. Oh, I love your show. And so I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And you are such a wealth of knowledge. I love talking to you about the subject. So can you share just a little bit about your background? Well, you mentioned how omega-3s are essential fatty acids. I have spent Gosh, now it's over 20 years in the space of omega-3s and in particular really got married to this space within health and nutrition because they're just so functional within the body. They're used for so many things and the measurable health impacts we can see when we get our omega-3s correct in our systems is just so incredible that I've essentially dedicated my career to this space. Wow. So... How how did your intrigue with omega three start? And by the way, I'm a science geek, so I I just love when I hear people talk about science so fervently and with such enthusiasm. Why omega threes? How did you get started in that area? Yeah, so this wasn't my first fray into the health and nutrition space. I started first in herbal extracts, working for a company that made herbal extracts to formulate into a variety of products. Mm -hmm. And so I was always coming from this headspace of, you know, what products out there can I integrate with specific herbs to help impact human health more, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was touring the Expo West in 1999. I'd already been in this space for a bit. Yeah. And I came across this brand, Nordic Naturals, which is a fish oil company. And they were selling omega 3s um, and telling people to chew these fruit flavored fish oil capsules. And it kind of disarmed me because mm -hmm. I was like, well, that sounds kind of gross, actually. And back then, there wasn't a lot of that out there. Fish oil. Um, my <laughs> <laughs> right. So I would my first, yeah, well, my first entry into omega threes had been a few years prior when I was training as an athlete. I was a sponsored athlete that was actually doing mountain biking um, as a sponsored athlete for Sobe beverages and oh, Cannondale. Cool. So I had taken fish oils from the athletic performance perspective because I wanted to have reduced recovery time. So I could snap back and mm. be at my most effective so that I could create more energy in my cells. And that's about all I knew about it. Like it was supposed yeah. to help me recover more quickly and to produce energy. And so when I first experienced omegas, it was always as a fish oil and I always had a fishy burp and it was pretty kind of terrible. <laughs> um, I got to the point in my own training where I would have to... <sighs> This is the uncomfortable part. I would peel off my jersey at the end of a training session and it would literally stink like fish. Wow. It was that really was. gross. Huh. And so the science nerd in me understood why this was happening and it kind of stopped me from taking those omegas um, that was happening because the oil was oxidizing and mm. the oxidized oil doesn't smell very good. And your your skin is your best because organ for you're eliminating. Gener generating from exercise, right? Yeah. Yeah. And because you're sweating so much, yeah. you're you're working to get this out of your system. And of course, it's That's coming out oil, of your skin. So. Right. Yeah. And so in the space of omega threes, and this is what really intrigued me. We first of all, we don't get enough from our diet because we're not eating fish three or four times a week. Consuming a fish oil could be really unpleasant. Yeah. Now there are companies that do it much better, like the Nordic Naturals of the world, right? And I started working with them. I was there for a decade, helped them build their omega-3s for the consumer marketplace. Mm. We um, participated in a lot of research. I got to see the benefit of these omega-3s and all sorts of specific conditions where we were working to ameliorate heart health markers or to work with people who had attention and focus concerns that they were trying to over overcome or that were having trouble shedding some stubborn weight because they didn't have the right omega balance. And so all of these things I could see over the years 
really people seeing a real benefit from taking this particular product and participating in health and research, going to the International Society for the Study of Fatty Acids and Lipids and geeking out with all sorts of doctors that are talking about the reasons that these omega-3s work this way and how they impact things like satiety or feelings of fullness and why when we get the balance wrong and we have too much omega-6 and too little omega-3, we're more likely to overeat that this is essentially how most processed foods are arranged. So we overeat all the time. And so the deeper I got, right? Yeah. And the deeper I got, the more I understood that this was such a critical thing. Like we really needed to get this balance, right? That it was too complicated to get there for most, most people with food because they wouldn't adopt the habit of eating fish three times a week. Or they would go to a plant-based source like flax oil and flax seeds, thinking that they were getting enough of the omega-3s, EPA and DHA, and they really weren't. So the challenge of getting there without consuming something like an omega-3 supplement that's high in EPA and DHA was really hard to overcome. And that's one of the reasons that a supplement works so very well. Mm. And so say what you will about the entire space, getting that balance, right? Getting enough omega-3 EPA and DHA so that your cells can actually use the functional fats is critical. It's hard to get there without supplementation. And so in the field of supplements, I felt like I could do the most good specifically focusing on that arena. That's great. So we know that omega-3s, are super important for so many physiological processes, you know, regulating um, your thyroid and helping with metabolism. And um, certainly for women, I think, you know, especially as you enter peri and meno, like so Mm. many women don't realize how important it is with regulating their hormones. Can you talk a little bit about what maybe most people don't know. I mean, I think we know enough to say like, yes, it helps with brain health, but what are the key things that people don't realize that omega-3s do? Wow. This is a big question. I know it is a big, let's break. So let's break it down into bite-sized pieces. Let's talk about one thing that maybe people don't realize. Okay. I think, you know, let's, let's think about it from the perspective of your brain and then the your gut, right? Like two core areas that you discussed in a recent podcast. Your brain is made up mostly of fat. I mean, aside from the water, we're we're mostly water beings, right? But most of it's actually fat out. It's it's sixty percent, right? Yeah, sixty percent of the fat uh, of your brain is actually comprised of fat, and more than half of that fat is specifically DHA or docosahexaenoic acid. And the reason that that is so critical to know going out the gates is that without the proper balance, without enough of this particular omega-3 in your diet, then you're not, you don't have the building blocks for a healthy brain. You're missing them. And so your body will then utilize the other fats that are in your system to make the brain up and your cells will be less capable of of trafficking nutrients, communicating from cell to cell, and ultimately just reproducing healthfully. Mm. So it's kind of becomes no wonder then that people suffer from seasonal affective disorder. It's like one part, you know, vitamin D from the sun, but also not getting enough of these right nutrients and your brain essentially suffers. Yeah. I did for a long time, by the way, that's something that plagued me when I was in my twenties, I was living in San Francisco and you know, the, the longest winter I ever spent was in San Francisco. I mean, not the summer, but the whole winter in San Francisco and uh, just not being able to see the sun and really not having this nutrition piece under my belt yet. Like it's real. It's very, very hard on a lot of people out there. Well, you're talking about being in a foggy winter too, because San Francisco would get socked in with fog through for a portion of the year. Um, And what was it? The quote from... uh, The coldest (laughs) winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. That's exactly the truth. But you know, know, in many pockets of the country where they're not seeing the sun, you know, um, that is obviously an issue. And also, you know, vitamin D deficiency, which um, ties in here, but... You know, on the subject of 
not getting enough DHA. Let's kind of break, let's take a step back and break down the different omega threes, because I think for many people, we hear omega threes and we just think about it in one big bucket, but there's actually types of omega threes that we really need to think about DHA being one of them. Can you kind of uh, address that too? It's not from a needle, a pill or a prescription. My favorite biohack for managing pain, helping gut health, managing mood, energizing my body from head to toe, and the perfect glow up is red light and infrared therapy. I cannot tell you enough about how much I love it. And my go-to is Loombox. It's a portable red light and infrared therapy box and it's so portable, you can take it with you. I travel with it everywhere. It is literally indispensable. And just 10 to 12 minutes a day is really all you need. I've seen a huge difference in my complexion. Uh, it helps with fine lines and with uh, skin clarity and has helped a lot of people that have skin issues. So if you have eczema or psoriasis, it's something that you want to take a look at. It's also tested by NASA. So there's a lot of data and science. It's not just one of these things where people are like, oh yeah, it works or, you know, I don't know. It's actually proven with multiple hundreds of scientific papers. And what I love about Loombox is it's so much more powerful than other light therapy type boxes or solutions. And you are going to get the most mileage out of this because it's something that you can use for so many different things. Managing pain, I mean, when I was recovering from my torn ACL and now my latest accident with my dog running into me full speed, uh, all 75 pounds of him into my knees. Um, it's something that I use all the time. I also use it to manage pain and inflammation after my workouts. And basically, it's my therapy every single day, especially during the long winter months where we don't get that much sunlight. You gotta try it, that's all I'm gonna say. I can't recommend it enough. And you can get up to $250 off of Loombox with my code, Chef Maria. You'll just go to the Loombox, that's the L U M E B O X dot com forward slash Chef Maria, or just go to the Loombox dot com and use Chef Maria at checkout for your discount. I'm telling you, it is the investment that will pay back in dividends for your health. I love it. Yeah, this kind of throws back to the earlier mention when I talked about flax oil and walnuts and things like that, which are all great foods. They're really great nutritious foods. They can also be high in other components that are important for total body wellness, right? But they're a source of linoleic acid, which is kind of the parent omega-3. And when you consume a terrestrial omega-3 source like walnuts or flax seeds or chia seeds, you're getting that linoleic acid, that alpha linoleic acid, okay? And so when you consume that alpha linoleic acid, you have to then break it down into its constituent parts using enzymes that your body has when it's operating optimally. And so you take that ALA or alpha linoleic acid and then you break it down using enzymes like delta-5 and delta-6 desaturase. And those then enable you to make EPA, which is eicosapentaenoic acid, and DHA, which is docosahexaenoic acid. These are the two particular fatty acids that fish oil and algae oil are best known for. And frankly, the fish gets their omega-3s, EPA, and DHA from the algae they consume. Yeah. I used to think when I first started working in this industry that fish were just like us, like they consumed plant-sourced um, omega-3 and like the algae must have the alpha linolenic acid just like the terrestrial plants do, but that's not the case. The algae actually produce EPA and DHA. And why this is so critical and important is that this is how our cells actually use the fats. So much like you might think of something like beta carotene, beta carotene is a precursor to um, vitamin A, right? Yeah. Your body 
breaks down the beta carotene into vitamin A that is then more active in your body systems. Well, EPA and DHA are much more active in your body systems. They're included in the framework of every single cell in your body. And DHA in particular is really involved in your mitochondria. And so it's critical in creation of ATP energy. Mm -hmm. So many of the health complaints and concerns that we have today are related to not getting enough of these core nutrients. So we essentially can't traffic um, nutrients from cell to cell, and we essentially can't also eliminate toxins. And so our systems become a little trapped and gummed up. Another thing that impacts our ability to make EPA and DHA, if we are to go to something like a plant source like flax oil or chia seeds or walnuts, as a for instance, is that the Delta-5 and Delta-60 saturates, which are used to break down the alpha-linolenic acid, there are the same enzymes that are used to break down linoleic acid, which is omega-6. And when I first started this, I, I misappropriated. I said linoleic acid for alpha linoleic acid. Linoleic acid is the beginning of the chain for um, omega-6s. Mm. And so linoleic acid will then break down and become arachidonic acid. And arachidonic acid versus EPA and DHA or AA versus EPA and DHA, they're like opposite sides of the spectrum. A arachidonic acid creates inflammatory prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and cytokines. So it creates some systemic inflammation. This inflammation can be important for things like healing. Like if you hit your toe with a hammer, you want it to heal. Your body needs to actually get a little inflamed to send the white blood cells there and, you know, start the process of repairing repair. tissues. Yeah. But we get out of control with too much arachidonic acid in our system because we consume a lot of the plant oils that are omega-6s. And we also consume a lot of animal products, which are high in arachidonic acid. And so they've got that ability to create that systemic inflammation. Well, EPA and DHA, they create anti-inflammatory prostaglandins, leukotrienes, and cytokines. And these things are all involved also in the creation of the hormones that run your body. So that earlier comment you made about how do they connect to then to how your hormones are running in your body, it's all connected to the processes that are a part of each of these chains. So you get enough EPA and DHA, enough omega-3, your body has the building blocks to create healthy cells, to traffic nutrients, to create the estradiol and the estrogen that is in our system mm -hmm. so that we can have a body in balance. And it seems to me like we have to we have to have a pretty well operating machine that is our digestion and our enzymatic um, you know, processes to, to really be able to make this all work. And we know that as we age, our ability to break um, nutrients down, our enzymes don't work as well as when we were young. So how do we know if we, we've got enough? Like what is enough? And how do we know if we're getting enough? Because I think, you know, and this is really interesting to me, I feel like what we used to think of as markers or, you know, whatever that enough was, is, you know, in a lot of cases, we're reevaluating, like in the case of magnesium, where it used to be, you know, a certain number. Now we're seeing that it's probably more like four or five times that number is what we should be after. How do we know if we have enough omega-3s and how do we, you know, how do we test this? Well, there are thankfully tests available that you can go ahead and take a simple blood spot test, Omega Quant sells one. And this is a test that retails for about $50. Um, the company I work with today, Orla Nutrition, we actually have a program that we're running called our Tested by You campaign, which enables people to test their lipid levels now and then after four months of supplementation to test again. So if people are interested in finding this out and also trying the product, then they can have the test costs covered because most insurance doesn't cover these, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are many people who are lobbying to get them to be covered as a part of your annual physical because Seems your like omega <laughs> right, your omega-3 index seems to be more indicative of what your overall health is than your cholesterol levels, as a for example. Yeah. We know that when we get to an omega-3 index of 8% to 12%, which is considered the optimal range, okay. that 
all cause mortality drops. And that is from, yeah, it's a major study called the Framingham study, which Mm -hmm. has been followed for decades and literally generations where they have been tracking these things. Like what are their vitamin D levels? How much omega-3 do they have every day? And then ultimately, where are they as in so far as their health markers, at what age did they die? You know, what diseases did they develop? I mean, the Framingham study is one of those hallmark studies um, out of the Massachusetts area that has been running for decades. Data is still coming in and being analyzed as time goes on. And, and we do see, for instance, how critical vitamin D seems to be to longevity, as well as the omega-3 index of these individuals. So we know that that's the, the goal, 8 to 12%. Most people who are vegetarian or vegan are going to test around three. Wow. And so let's, that let's is... Let's stop on that for a second because yeah. you literally took the thought out of my brain. I was just going to ask you, where do most people index? Mm-hmm. So it seems to me that if your levels are that low and you are trying to, you know... Uh, let's forget about thinking straight, just like trying to regulate your hormones and not feel like you are losing your mind. Like we should probably be looking at that before we start prescribing HRT and other things. Right. Because that, that is like a placebo. Basically you're, you're giving somebody something that's not really addressing the issue at hand. That is major. So what, well, what it is do, major? So what, when somebody's what at a do three, what people do. And how else will that? How else are they going to know? Uh, there are so many symptoms that can be connected to an omega three deficiency that it will just sound like it's the same symptom or of like you know somebody who has diabetes or somebody who has who is grossly overweight or um, you know it's just it's so hard because I could say I'll give you a laundry list of some of the things that can be symptoms of. Um, just having too low of an omega three index. Okay, you can Listeners, have a difficulty listen to this because if you have any of these symptoms, you want to pay attention. <laughs> if your skin doesn't heal very quickly, if you have dry, flaky skin, if you've noticed that you get a lot of um, eczema style outbreaks on your hands and feet, if you are feeling low energy persistently, Mm. if you are having trouble losing weight when you've adjusted your diet and exercise regimen, Mm. if you are seeing that you um, are, your eyes are a little dry or you're feeling like they're scratchy more throughout the day. I mean, all of these things can be connected. What about joint pain? Joint pain is another, but often that is actually really closely tied to overconsumption of arachidonic acid. And that's when people really start to see kind of that thing flare up. The inflammation, right? Right. So they could have, and they probably won't, but they could have, you know, a good fair amount of omega-3s and still experience a lot of joint pain and joint issues because they're just, they have too much systemic inflammation overall. Well, the reason I brought this up is mm -hmm. I'm going to say it because I've been taking Orlo for about a month now, a month and a half. And I tend to have a lot of inflammation in my hands. Um, I think it has something to do with weightlifting, but um, since I started taking it, it's gone. And particularly in my right hand, I don't feel it at all. You know, there are certain nutrients that we have to get from outside sources, and omega-3s are one of them. They come from essential fatty acids, and that word essential means they're critical to our health and performance. Now, there's a new way to get all the omega-3s that you need, and it performs three times better than fish oil which makes it great for people who are plant-based. We're basically taking out the middleman that is fish. It comes from sustainably grown, clean and pure Icelandic ultra algae. So you get all the EPA and DHA that you need directly from the source of algae. It's called Orlo Nutrition. And it's literally the most sustainable omega-3 in the world. What I love about it too, is that they give you two self-tests and you you send those tests in and they will let you know where your starting point is and where you are in terms of your omega-3 levels. 
so you can actually monitor how the supplement is doing for you. You're not just spending money on a supplement and hoping and praying that it's gonna do something, you'll actually see the results. Now, we need that EPA and DHA for so many things, for our heart, for our circulatory system, for a healthy immune and digestive system, for your brain health, it's so, so critical. And for my ladies especially, when we get to that certain age, we need it for hormone health. So I can't recommend it enough. Orlo Nutrition has really changed my life and I definitely feel the difference. And what's great is there's no fish burps. Fish burps are no bueno. So I'm excited for you to try Orlo Nutrition. You can get 10% off your purchase by using the code Chef Maria, that's C H E F M A R E Y A, at Orlo, that's O R L O, nutrition.com. And I know you're going to love it as much as I do. Make sure you check out Orlo Nutrition for sustainably produced from algae, no fish involved omega threes. I know, I know this is going to be a game changer for you. So this is something that I've heard from a lot of people over the years too. And personally myself, I see that I get, um, it's like stiffness, especially yeah. in the mornings when I get yeah. up, like if I try to curl my hands into would be claws and fists that they just feel a little stiff. And that has for me happened when I eat too many dairy products like really a lot. I, I will notice that. Well, I don't um, eat dairy at all. I've since cut out dairy. And so oh. I don't get that as much, but you know, I'm more sensitive than a lot of people when it comes to dairy too. So, you know, I think each of these things can be really individual, but that being said, you know, the, the common things I just mentioned, there's, there's even some that are connected to like um, losing too much hair because DHA actually helps the the growth cycle of your hair follicle. Okay. And so if you're getting too little omega-3 and too little protein, protein is often a reason that women will start to to lose Should, some of their yeah. hair, right? Yeah. So for example, that your growth cycle for your hair just isn't great enough and so won't overcome the shedding cycle. And so you get enough DHA, your skin is going to look more youthful, a little better glow to it, things like that. Yeah. You are going to have a better time with healing. If you cut yourself or scratch yourself, you're also more likely to have fuller, thicker hair when you consume it for a long period of time. And these are not changes that you'll ne necessarily notice overnight, but some of the yeah. other ones, like feeling like you're more focused or you have more energy in the morning or the pain in your hands is gone or, you know, your eyes was, aren't scratchy anymore. That was anymore. really quick, by the way. That happened like within, I would say, like a week and a half yeah. or so. And consistently, and, and I think this is really important for everybody listening is it's really important to write things down. You know, when you start taking something new, actually log it into, I like to write it down in a journal, like, how are you feeling today? Mm -hmm. Take an, a, an assessment of your body. Like, have you noticed dry eyes? Have you noticed stiffness? Um, have you noticed brain fog or low energy? Or when in the day do you notice those dips? And then once you start taking something, what changes and how long does it take? Like, we all have to kind of do that um, accounting for ourselves and, and take inventory, right? Yeah. And I mean, the common question that comes up then is, all right, like, let's say I tested a three or a 4%, right? Like, let's say I'm the standard American and I'm also been plant-based mostly. I don't consume fish. I'm fairly certain I'm going to come in at three or four, right? Because that's where most people do. Yeah. Well, at that point, you know, you might need a gram a day of EPA and DHA to quickly get to something like 8% um, total um, omega-3 in your blood cells, right? But you don't necessarily need to commit to that high level if you're taking something that's in this kind of polar lipid form. And so the polar lipid form, there's, you know, there's, there's, a few different forms of fats. Okay. We have the typical fish oil, which is in the triglyceride or ethyl ester form. These are concentrated oils from a fish, right? They're also available as algae oils. So you can get a vegan source of EPA and DHA in this triglyceride or ethyl ester form. And they are pretty well absorbed by your body, but they aren't in the form that your body automatically utilizes. 
And so with something like what Orlo is doing by being able to isolate them in the polar lipid form, it's essentially the usable form that your body can plug in. It gets right into your cells. And one of the reasons that I have been such a proponent of this particular form of fat has to do with how much of the population has an APOE4 genome type. Now, this is the super for the super nerds out there. I was going to say, I think we're about to geek out here. So yeah. hang, hang, <laughs> hang tight with this explanation. But roughly 20% of the population has at least one representation of APOE4. APOE4 Which, genome yes. types are mm -hmm. a little, they have a tougher time integrating omega-3s into their brain and eyes. And it's thought that part of the reason that this particular set of the population is more likely to develop neurodegenerative diseases has to do with the fact that they have a harder time integrating omega-3 fats into the brain and eyes, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you know that that is something that affects a fifth of the population, even if you don't know what your genome type is, I happen to know because I took a 23andMe test and the 23andMe test revealed that I had one haplotype group was APOE4. I already suspected it because my grandmother, um, she ended up passing on after developing dementia, Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's disease in her later years, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm keenly aware that I need more omega-3s and that this polar lipid form is going to get into my cells more efficiently. And part of the reason that you are even able to say, gosh, I noticed a difference in a matter of weeks when somebody taking a fish oil supplement or a standard omega-3 algae oil would probably have taken a month or more to realize those same benefits. Mm -hmm. By getting that polar lipid form, you get a smaller pill, you actually have the ability to consume less of the EPA and DHA. And because it's in the form that's automatically integrated into your cells, you don't get that kind of burp back or reflux. I mean, the reality is even when you get a really fresh fish oil or really fresh algae oil, you will typically experience some kind of a burp back, whether or not it tastes fishy, because there's this um, natural aldehyde byproduct that's created in your gastric juices when you're when your body tries to assimilate it. Mm. That doesn't happen with a polar lipid because it's already in this form that gets into your cells. It's easy to absorb and integrate. Yeah. And I mean, this was a frustration point for me for years because I'm such a proponent of omega-3s, right? My husband is 10 years older than me. I'd like him to live a long time. I'd like mm. him to live along with me to see our kids into their old age, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and so remember your name. And your kid's name. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, this is the thing that haunts me. You know, I have, um, not on my side of the family, but cousins of my dad. Um, now, two brothers have both passed away from Alzheimer's. It's so hard. So, it's such a hard thing because it's like the, the worst way to go. I, it's it really the worst. Is. And it's so painful for the families. And But what we know, and I, I really want people to, to listen to this. So much of this is very preventable. So it's not a death sentence if it runs in your family. It's not if you happen to have this gene type, it doesn't mean that you can't be proactive in what you do to get the right omega-3s in, to um, live a lifestyle that helps to prevent this kind of degenerative disease from taking over. Like we can do something about it. And I think that should be really good news for everyone. Well, and the fact that we can see a measurable result quickly is something that I think is really, really great. So, you know, to have the knowledge that I can go ahead and consume this and affect my brain and eye health and affect the likelihood of me ever de becoming demented is, is really important. For my husband, you know, I don't know what his genome type is because he refuses to take any of the genetic tests. <laughs> That being said, you know, he is 10 years older than me. So he's got a head start on all of this, on all the yeah. health challenges that will come up. I tried to get him to take fish oils for years. I mean, I worked at Nordic Naturals for a decade, right? And I, I really couldn't get him to take them because they caused digestive distress for him. It didn't matter how fresh it was. It would send him to the toilet mm. every time he took an omega-3 fish oil. And so now I've, you know, been working with Orlo to bring this to market for the past three years. And I've had him on this for the last couple of years since we've had it available. He never has digestive distress. It never sends him to the toilet. So I've got 
I've got compliance. I almost called them patient, patient compliance, but that's what they call it. (laughs) Have you ever wondered, is rinsing my produce with the water that comes out of the sink that I don't even drink enough to really clean it? Well, then you're one of the smartest people I know because you're absolutely right. It's not enough. That's why we created the only all natural and patented line of food wash and wipes. And it's called Eat Cleaner. It's tasteless, odorless, and lab tested. And it removes up to 99.9% of the residue that water can't, including pesticides, wax, soil, and junk that can carry bacteria that can really make you sick. Plus, we formulated it to help extend the shelf life of your fresh produce too. And that'll save you money. When your berries are lasting up to 10, 12 days, you know that's a good thing. It helps your produce last up to five times longer using a natural blend of fruit acids and antioxidants. So there's no chemicals, it's just clean eating fun. And this can help save your family an average of over $500 per year. Make it easy on yourself, reduce waste, and get that fruit and veggies into your body where it's gonna do you a lot of good and not in the trash. Check us out eatcleaner.com or head to our Amazon store at amazon.com forward slash eatcleaner. Uh, Well, and that, that is a big thing with supplements in general, right? Because Mm -hmm. I think, you know, for everybody listening, who's like, well, you know, for the fish eaters, well, I eat fish, so therefore I'm getting it. Or for the plant-based eaters, well, I eat walnuts and flax, so I get it. And what we're saying is you're likely not at the right levels to function optimally. Um, So getting that test and then what Orlo does is you take the test and then you take the product and then you can see what it's done. So it's over four months. It's not in a vacuum. It's not kind of like this, oh, I'm not really sure if I'm just peeing it out and it's not doing anything. So I think that's really important. Right. And we've had some users so far come back, like for instance, a couple of influencers that we've worked with that were vegetarian, right? And they thought that they would be fine for similar reasons. Like I consume a healthy diet. It's really balanced. I don't eat processed foods, so I'm not getting all that extra omega-6. I'm sure I'm doing well, right? Their results come back and I, I got what I expected to get, which was, you know, three and a half, three point seven. 3.2, something like that is their initial results for their omega-3 index levels. Yeah. And then after three to four months of supplementation, most of them have almost doubled that, gone up to like six and a half or 7%. And that's just through taking two soft gels a day, which are small and easy to consume and don't repeat back on them. And so that's out of the danger zone and moving into kind of the mid zone. And my belief is that if they continue even taking just the same two soft gels a day, that they'll likely get to 8%. It just takes time to move that needle. So, you know, we do the test at day one when you're getting started. And then after four months, you could always choose to take another test later. And Omega Quant, who makes these tests, they're completely third party. So you get the data directly from them. It's not something that we own. It's not some technology that we created. You know, we don't touch it. You have a direct relationship with them. And it enables you to have, again, that kind of added layer of assurance that what you're doing every day is actually having an effect beyond even just how you feel, right? Well, let's talk about age because I think, you know, on the subject of age and depending on how old you are um, for our listeners, you know, the body is really wanting, your body wants you to survive, It's going to do everything that it can to make sure that you survive and try to thrive. So it will rob Peter to pay Paul, I like to say. Like it will take um, nutrients from your body and redistribute them wherever it can. Mm -hmm. But you get to a certain point in life where your body's not really that efficient in doing that. Is there an age where we just really like, I know with Alzheimer's, we start to um, see you can start to see signs of it, you know, a decade prior, but is there an age where it's kind of like, no, your body's really not able to be that efficient in redistributing nutrients. Like this is probably the age that you really want to start thinking about it, or is it very personal? 
It is very personal. And what I think is coming out in the science is that this is directly connected to when you've started to build up plaque, because so much of what they are finding is related to that decline in brain health has to do with the plaque buildup within the brain. And so a lot of things contribute to that. It's unhealthy lifestyle over a long period of time. But we're even seeing that in children who've had the standard American diet and, you know, probably consuming McDonald's a couple times a week because their parents are running between everything they're doing and may not have the healthiest habits otherwise, or might even be eating a different meal than the parents are eating because they're picky. And um, too often, I think parents yield to that. I, I'm a mom of two boys and I confront the challenges. So I, I know about all this stuff too. Oh yeah. I mean, um, I, I was a single mom for 13 years. Like the idea of making dinner always seemed daunting, but like, these are the things that you have to do, you know? Yeah, you have to and I think you, they'll eat what you put in front of them if they're really oh, hungry. And if yeah. they're not really hungry, then, you know, maybe they can wait and not have the packet of chips. Um, right. As it stands, you know, I, I can't be judgmental for this because everyone's doing their best every day. We have ready access to some really unhealthy foods, so much so that we see plaque building up in the arteries of children at the age of six, you know? No. So there's there's wow. young people with atherosclerosis already, which is hardening of the arteries, build up a plaque. Um, we need to get through that. We need to get over those hurdles. And the sure way to do that is to really focus on what you're putting into your body, what you're putting into your daily diet. I heard you recently talking about the perils of things like some of these artificial sweeteners like Splenda. I I think it's absolutely imperative that we work to get these things out of our diet, mm -hmm. that we be a little bit more militant about it, especially as it relates to our children, because yes. if we don't do that, then we're setting them up for failure. And the diseases that we see coming on in the 30s and 40s will come up in the teens and 20s. You and me, really sister, we, we got to be the army of people that are uh, starting this. It's warfare. It really yeah. is. Because, it really is. I mean, sucralose is in everything now. And what pisses me off, and I'm going to say that because it's my podcast, um, that it's showing up in nutrition, supposedly healthy sports nutrition products, Yep, you know, and that to me is a crime. Um, well, and if it's not there, then they're using maltitol and other sugar alcohols and the sugar alcohols create digestive distress and they also kill microbiota. So yeah. then you're working with a system that isn't working as well to digest the foods that you're putting in. I mean, it's really awful to have to say this, but if it comes in a wrapper, maybe don't eat it. You know, like if we can get to a space you where you have to read the label. Yeah. Yes. We need to know what's happening in your body and the fact that it's happening so young, you know, I think what, um, I think just kind of flipping the script a little bit and not thinking about it being a weight problem as it is a longevity problem. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have, uh, a lifestyle and eating habits that cut our lives short. I mean, this is the first generation that will not outlive their parents. Think about that. Um, with all the technology we have, with all of the knowledge that we have, this is the first generation that will not outlive their parents. So, you know, let's think about it as a longevity issue versus, um, you know, well, I don't want to restrict Johnny from eating because I want him to embrace his body image. No, that's not, that's not what we're talking about here. We want Johnny to live a long life so that he can be around. Um, and I think if we frame it up a little bit differently, people might receive it better, but yeah. And I think the good news is that there are simple practices that can help you get there. And one of them is getting enough omega threes. I mentioned earlier that yeah. there is a need for people who are having even trouble losing weight to really focus on getting that balance, right? That applies to kids too. Yeah. If we don't get the right balance of omega threes to omega sixes in our systems, we're going to be more likely to overeat. We're going to be more likely to be driven by cravings. And part of the, the driver behind those cravings is that we're missing something. And the child doesn't always know what they're missing. And the parent doesn't always know what they're missing. So, you know, if you can just focus on trying to get more of what's good into your diet, then naturally more of what's bad will fall off your plate. 
Yeah, I think that's a great point because if you prioritize protein, I always tell um, my, you know, my um, coaching clients and in, in, in my programs, I talk about like, you crowd out the junk. Mm-hmm. So if, you're, if your goal is to get a, a gram of protein per body weight, you know, pound of body weight, if you're eating 120, 150 grams of protein for the average woman, there's not going to be a whole lot of room for the junk. You're just not going to be hungry. You're going to be, your satiety is going to be in check. No, I have, I have trouble getting that much protein. It's really hard. I do a shake yeah. a day, typically sometimes two to help me get to that point. Um, because it's so challenging to eat that much. Food. It is, but here's the thing. It, it's just really about prioritizing macronutrients and mm-hmm. the things that we need are your essential fatty acids and your essential amino acids, which are going to come in protein form. Mm-hmm. Um, so as we kind of near the end, I think, thank you, Karina, for sharing so much valuable information. I, let's distill it down. Let's give people the cliff notes because um, for for those that maybe have not followed the the deeper science of this, Omega threes. We have a few different types of omega threes. What are the essentials? We talked about DHA. That's correct. Docosahexaenoic acid. That's the long word, but DHA okay. and, and EPA. EPA and right. ALAs, correct? And ALA, alpha linolenic acid. That's the plant source precursor to EPA and DHA. Okay. And so while you can focus on getting more ALA too, It takes about 16 times the amount of ALA to get to what you would need in DHA and EPA. So So DHA and EPA is really the the narrow focus here. And for Mm -hmm. people who don't eat salmon, fatty fish, et cetera, they can get it from a supplement like Orlo, for example. Um, Mm -hmm. And the absorbability of that There's no difference. Like if you're plant-based or even if you're not plant-based and you don't eat fish, because I know a lot of people who don't eat fish or, you know, if they are getting their omega-3s from grass-fed beef, for example, you know, not a lot of people maybe eat enough beef, for example. So if you're getting that from a supplement and you're able to absorb it, it's, there's no like one is better than the other in terms of the nutrient, you're, you're getting the pure nutrient from the supplement without the added saturated fat and cholesterol from doing it from something else, correct? Right, that's correct. And the amount of EPA and DHA and even a grass-fed meat is going to be lower than it would be in fish. The challenge today with fish as a source is that most of our salmon is farmed and salmon is actually fed soybean and corn at this point, which are not natural foods for them when they are farmed. So um, the reality with those is the, those are precursors to omega-6s. And so what we're even finding in salmon that is farmed is that their levels of omega-3s have declined and their levels of omega-6s are up. You know and what I, just- I read? This is disturbing. Mm. Not only are they not fed the right food, But because of the crowded conditions of farm-raised salmon, 90% of them have lice. Yeah, it's it's really sad. I've done a deep dive into this because I am... you know, I've been in this industry for a long time. Yeah. I also host a podcast that is very much focused on social impact and sustainability. So I interviewed Simon Setra, who is a He did an investigative journalist book called The New Fish, which talks about salmon farming in Norway and in CNET pens, right? And they actually have a term for those fish. They call them whiteheads because the the lice eat off so much of the fish's skin that they you oh. see their skulls now. It's really sad. And oh. so I, I just want people to understand like source really matters when you're talking about fish. If you don't and, see me right now, I'm holding my head and my it's face. So sad. It, it is so disturbing to me. And yeah. and the sad thing is that people are thinking that they're doing the right thing by eating the fish. But because they've learned over decades of people this, talking about it, you know, if it's they're like, not asking about the source, then it's, it's doing more harm than good. So yeah. source does really matter. And don't be shy. If you are in a restaurant, it is incumbent that you ask, you know, 
is it wild caught or farm raised? My family is so used to this now. Like if it's on a menu and it doesn't explicitly say wild caught, if it's farm raised, I do not, there's no way I'm ordering it because it's a different, it's literally a different animal with a different omega-3 profile. That's, that's exactly right. Okay, when it comes to cooking and doing it in a way that is healthy for your fit life, there's a few things that we have to keep in mind. Number one, is it functional? Number two, is it clean? Meaning, does it contain any of those yucky coatings that they add to cookware nowadays, especially the nonstick kind? We don't need that, we don't want that. And number three, is it pretty? Because hey, if it's aesthetic, it's gonna make us feel pretty good when we cook on it. And that's why I am totally digging hex clad cookware. Talk about the most gorgeous cookware you will ever use. Plus it's totally functional and healthy to use. Hex clad's patented hybrid cookware brings performance of the stainless steel, the durability of cast iron, and the convenience of nonstick all in one. That, my friends, is Michelin level standards with cleanup convenience because when we're cooking at home, we don't wanna be scrubbing dishes all day long either. So now you can unleash your potential in the kitchen without any limits. What I love about it, that nonstick hybrid technology coupled with excellent temperature control, you've gotta be able to temper your temperature to get that great sear and to do the nice poaches. Easy care, so it's gonna clean up easy and easy cleaning. All of that with the additional benefit of being free from toxic coatings and having a lifetime warranty. This is the cookware you're gonna use for life, my friends, so it's time to take a little assessment of the cookware that you have. If you have your hand-me-down Teflon cookware, it's time to throw it out and invest in a nice new set, and Hexclad is gonna deliver on its promise with that lifetime warranty. I can't recommend it enough. I'm totally infatuated with mine. Can I say that, infatuated? And I know you're gonna be too. So make sure you head over to hexclad.com forward slash Chef Maria, and you'll get up to 30% off your new cookware. Start the year off right and cook with delight. How about that for a rhyme? No, seriously though. Use my code Chef Maria at hexclad.com. That's H E X C L A D.com and you'll get up to 30% off your purchase. You will not be disappointed. So, I mean, I'm at the point where I very rarely consume fish now. I did go fish free for about six months as my own little experiment where I wanted to see what my omega-3 levels would be, just supplementing with Orlo without consuming any fish at all. Mm, and I was at about, yeah, I got to about 6.8%, which is pretty good right? Just yeah. taking a couple soft gels every day. Yeah. Um, now I'm starting to integrate again, some healthy marine sources. Um, I tend to go to the smaller fish like sardines and anchovies mm -hmm. because they're wild and because Always they're wild. higher in EPA yeah. and DHA. They also have less of a buildup of toxins in their bodies. So that means things like the plastics that are in our ecosystems, PCBs, dioxins, biphenols, bisphenols. I mean, all these things that are just all really... those hormone disruptors, right? Yeah. So it's just a good idea to go lower on the food chain if you can, to always go wild. If it doesn't say wild, it's farmed. And yeah. even at the restaurants, I've seen restaurant staff lie to people before, <laughs> you know, but really, if it doesn't say wild on the menu, it's farmed. You have to assume that mm -hmm. for tuna, for swordfish, for salmon, for cod, I mean, for just about all of them, for bass. Yeah. So such, such good tips, Karina. Um, where can people find your podcast? And we're going to provide a link to the Orlo Nutrition website in the show notes where people can get 10% off their purchase using my code. Um, so make sure that you check that out. But where where can they find your podcast? Because I was on your podcast too, and I really enjoyed um, you as a host and just all of the content that you provide. Oh, thank you so much. I loved having you on as a guest too. Frankly, I'm 
probably more suited in that seat because I've just been hosting shows for so long. No, you're great. You're great as a guest too. <laughs> as, as it stands, the Nutrition Without Compromise is the nutrition-focused show that I host for Orla Nutrition. You can find it on the orlanutrition.com website. You can find it wherever you listen to podcasts. And it's also available on YouTube. And that's just youtube.com slash Orla Nutrition. So great. And, we make and it we'll, really we'll easy to find. That too. Yeah, we'll Absolutely. include a link to that too so people can check it out. So every episode when I have a guest on, I always ask the same question to close us out. If you could have any meal cooked by anybody with us or, or past, what would the meal be and who would make it? Oh, that's such a good question. Any chef. No, <laughs> I know it's a hard one, huh? <laughs> so many people I'd love to have cook for me, actually. You know, I, I actually think it's somebody famous and um, not necessarily famous for their cooking, but just because I'm curious to see what they would make me. Ah. And that would be David Bowie because he was such an artist in everything he did. Ah. And I know he was passionate about great food. Um, okay. I have no idea what his skill would be in the kitchen. Interesting. But I imagine that it would be a very interesting meal. It would be. And if he sang, that would be and worth it anyway, <laughs> whether he was a good cook or not. What would right. he make you? I His think choice? he would, I, honestly, I, I'm picturing a risotto. Okay. I don't know why, but I'm, I really do love risotto. I probably eat it once every five years. It's just something I consider an indulgence for some reason. I and so it's it not something I gravitate time. towards. I, I love risotto and I, I do it in a way that's very healthful um, and, you know, always adding protein, d just using fresh stock, you know, makes a, di a big difference. I don't add cream or mascarpone like a lot of people do to make it creamy. Um, you just stir that baby and I use cannaroli rice and it's divine. I, I mm. love it. So yeah, a really good risotto you, is hard to beat. I can make so, you risotto sometime. <laughs> I would take that for sure. Yes. Thank you. Well, Karina, thank you so much for being on. Thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge. I think you have woken us up to the importance of omega-3s for not only our brain health and cardiovascular health, but our hormone health, you know, our ability to be able to thrive and do all of the things we were created to do. So everybody make sure you check out Karina's podcast and also check out the link that we have provided for Orlo. I will tell you firsthand, I'm not getting paid to do this. Um, it has made a huge difference in my life. And I think once you know about something good, you want to share it with everybody else. So take the test, see where you end up with your levels and see for yourself the impact that self-testing and taking your own health into your hands can have on you. So until next time, this is Recipes for Your Best Life. Make it delicious.